Ben Schessler, she should just wear a t-shirt and say, I'm up Teresa's ass and Jennifer Aiden's ass on the back. I'm not gonna argue with that one. Virtual reality. Hi, I'm Danny Murphy. And I'm Evan Real. And they kept it bougie this week, but also uh, the bougie had a little drama and I don't know, the bash had some storm off. Where have you been? Talking shit. You're obsessed with me. Why are you bringing that up? What the It was kind of traditional peak New Jersey as we continue, but this time between Fuda and Fessler, which I I thought they made up, but I I don't know, Evan, did I did I make up the makeup? Why are you yelling at me? Because you stormed off. I think you might have made up Okay. The, I think that things simmer down for a little bit, but I think that, you know, as as a Taurus, as Tauruses do, I think it was still brewing in the back of Fuda's mind that Fessler had closely associated with Teresa and Aiden. And then, of course, things just got even crazier after this Aiden versus Cabral physical altercation. I think Fessler was given a certain version of events i because i don't think she was up close and personal I, I don't think she saw it herself she was at the party though right yeah because remember yeah she was there because remember she was like margaret who but then left when they started talking about about margaret and then brought the ta- the the napkins to jennifer aiden so she was there she was on the ground right, right. she was there and so she got the lowdown from jennifer aiden and then she was telling fuda about you know hey or oh and danielle she was telling danielle first and then danielle like was sort of like Baby girl, the way you're talking about this, it makes it seem like you are taken up for Jennifer Aiden when I feel like it was discussed among everyone that Aiden was the aggressor. She is the one who did the first shove. The, and even, only- wait, because even in the reenactment. Can you just show me how she did it? She was in like that. My oh my face. God, that would not be. And I went just like that. <laughs> when. <laughs> Right. It couldn't have been more clear. Because <laughs> then she was, Jennifer was like, Teresa, stand up. I was, she was in my face and I pushed. And then Teresa was like, ah. So Fessler saw the theater performance, but I think what she, this shows why she's good on Housewives. And I feel it's also a quality some people like, where she's not going to tell you what you want to hear. Mm. She's going to tell you her truth. She has a different story than her shoving me aggressively? Yes. What's her story? I'm going to tell you. What's her story? Right. And I, that could get people into sticky situations as I think she's seeing now. You know that you were part of what happened, right? Sounds like you have her back. I do. I'm friends with her. Because I do realize, I think she's going to need to do more than, because I think they did forgive each other over like little like pancakes. They're going to need bigger pancakes if they're going to want to. Exactly. Yeah, definitely going to need bigger pancakes because the second that Fessler mentioned, so at first it was like, is Je- is Jen Fessler sticking up for Aiden? Then it somehow devolved into this situation where Jen Fessler was talking to Teresa and Gia about this alleged analogy that John Fuda made about Gia. And as we know, history shows you never make an analogy about Gia. So discussing uh, said analogy about Gia with Gia and Teresa and but the the comparison of me and that analogy you don't even want your name like up. verse like him and his innocence now as an an adult like just don't even bring up my name I get that John Fuda's name which you've been told not to say like it's just oh my god it was a recipe for disaster but I felt for Jen Fessler in that moment because. I very much connected with her wanting to, you know, this is now a buzzword on New Jersey campaign. Fessler's just doing too much. You are not my f-ing campaign manager. Like, it's enough. I connected with her. They're election year. So they're really a yeah, campaign. Yeah, they're on the trail. It is 2024. Yes. And she I, she was campaigning for John Fuda. She was trying to defend the Fudas in that moment because, you know, watching that clip back, it was very clear that John Fuda was in no way trying to malign Gia. I don't even think he was making a connection between the Gia Coke analogy of years past. I he think was just saying they were the age. I was, I was in trouble for selling a little bit of marijuana when I was 17 years old. I was younger than her daughter Gia is, right? And you're accusing me of being the largest drug dealer on top of it. Exactly. He was just saying like, look, like I was that age when I made these mistakes with 
weed or whatever and and those charges from the past when i was a teenager it's the same as you know like thinking of gia in in that scenario and you know now she's an adult and she's grown past that and you know children <laughs> we're just and children. how it continues because you know we love our irish man i love him more than the irish men because i haven't watched the movie because it's four hours long paul is the one who played telephone with this which he has kids too and i would never bad mouth i kids. swear he wasn't bad mouthing gia well paul told dolores about it let me go get dolores Hey, oh, we, 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 we think we, we know we love you, but we think you're a little messy right now. And he was putting into perspective. You would get but, mad but. that somebody talked about your daughter at that age. He was not trying to accuse Gia. No. It's kind of entertaining. <laughs> I mean, you're causing you're causing some of the mess. No, I, I I think Paul has been such a great addition to the New Jersey cast, especially because the husbands, as we know, are such, you know, they're a part of the secret sauce that make the show so great. And he's getting himself involved, which, uh, you know, messy or not, we do love to see it. He's helping push the storyline forward. He is. Wait, because it is an election year, like we're saying, and they're loving campaigning, and we know Jersey's not doing a traditional reunion. Do you think they would benefit from having a debate? Like, do you think the girl, they should just have like, a week long of like two, they they pick the two people that really got to go at it and they just do a debate to say their case. Do you think that'd be an amazing idea or the stupidest idea? I think that would be an amazing idea. And I feel like you should pitch that to Bravo immediately. I hope that Andy Cohen and his cohorts are listening because that would, yeah, that would be incredible. But the thing, okay, obviously you would want Melissa and Teresa to debate each other. Of course that goes without saying, mm -hmm. but who else would you want to see debating against each other? Would it be Fessler and Fuda? Would it be Marge and Aiden? Like, how would you? I think, you, you know what I want? I actually don't need Melissa and Teresa. Right, right because what more can they say? What they said, they I need Teresa and Marge. Oh, yeah. I need Teresa and Marge. Okay. I'm I'm sorry to both, but I think I need it. I need Danielle and Aiden. Yep. Okay. I need Fuda and Fessler. Okay. And I want Melissa to moderate. No, she can't moderate all of them. She can't moderate Melissa, uh, Teresa, and uh, Marge's. But I feel she can moderate the other ones because she kind of, for those other two, is being in a friendly energy with both sides of it. You know what I mean? So I think that could be something. And then Jackie can moderate the others? Yes. She is? She's, she's a former She's moderator. a lawyer. Yeah, oh, she's well, she can't, she can't moderate Teresa and Margaret. Well, maybe after last episode, oh. she's in a more neutral space and place because I, I really need to get Jackie's reaction to Teresa very transparently admitting that she's using her. I know, Honestly, I know. I, I just, sometimes I stare off into space and I think about it because it hurt. Like it just, it's bothering me it, so much. It hurts because it takes, I feel like it took me back to like a fear I feel like I had in high school. You know what I mean? Yes. Or something like that where I'm like, Oh my God, like the person who like I wanted to sit at the table with, I'm there, like we're friends now. And I'm like, oh, what are they saying about me? My back. And it's just so hard to relive all that. And it really, I know, and I feel, and Jackie wasn't in this episode, so we couldn't even get any like glimpse of how she's doing right after that, but she doesn't know. So I am really, really curious about it. She seems unbothered because she didn't post anything about it. So I don't know if she's unbothered or embarrassed. Unbothered, embarrassed, or maybe just sort of hiding from it because I like I I can't imagine riding so hard for someone you know in such a short amount of time and then seeing that and I just I can only imagine how debilitating that felt for her or maybe it did it maybe she's able to like separate herself maybe it's just like that's my New Jersey housewife life and I can, you know what I mean maybe she's very good at compartmentalizing I hope so maybe or she's just like Remy Ma she's like who's that peeking in my window nobody because I live in a penthouse in Tenafly so she's unbothered I <laughs> hope I hope that is the case for RJ but I would love I would love if she and Teresa, because she did say they have a good friendship, for her to be like, Teresa, what was... Maybe maybe they were able to hash it out. Well, speaking of friendships, like, fracturing, it looks like Aiden and Teresa, after this episode, things are going to get a little, a little weird, because she didn't like that Teresa was going to Danielle Cabral's Bougie Kids Bash. You know, I'm not going to tell you not to go. I'm disappointed in Teresa that she's going. I thought... She was a loyal friend, and now you go to a girl's party that hit me. Like she, she admitted that it hurt her feelings in a confessional, and I think from what we've seen in trailers, like she's gonna say that to Teresa's face eventually. So, well, here is what's interesting, and I know 
<clears throat> she was saying, because like the Drake moment, Teresa let Jennifer go to Melissa's housewarming. So like they're they're like I, I when I saw that I was kind of like, well, why like why is this like that runs deeper that drama than this? I, right. Um, right. No, totally. It's it's a it's a little weird. And exactly, that's a great point, Danny. Like, why is she so upset when when she was like, you can you can go to Melissa's party, whatever? Yeah, that's that's so interesting. I I feel like it's very weird the way that Aiden seems to be methodically trying to take down Danielle Cabral. I, I forgot who pointed it out, but it was like one glam girl, then another glam girl, and then it was the stealing from the charity, which. Jennifer Aiden did not technically say she stole from the charity, but essentially she was saying that because she was saying I was like, she said it. She Yeah, exactly. That, she said it. It was a synonym for yeah. exactly that. You know what I mean? So I don't know. It's it seems like she was like trying all these different ways to take her down. And then some people were noticing from last week's episode, Danny, that after she got the cup smashed in the side of her face. There was this shot of her looking happy, like a little gleeful, like smiling. And people were surmising or theorizing that Jennifer Aiden had a plan all along. And it finally worked where she was able to really ignite Danielle Cabral and have her, you know, retaliate in a way that she thought might be unfavorable. However, what she yep. might not have realized is that, like, the way you got her there was by shoving her. And so, you know what I mean? It wasn't like yeah. she something that got her to the to the cut moment like she's the one who like first physically like she thought she was like she thought she was playing checkers and it's like no baby she played herself and got hit like that's just kind of what went down yeah and also i don't think she from what i've been seeing the internet seemingly on danielle's side in that more so than jennifer aiden's yeah, I mean, like, just from what I've seen on social media, it definitely seems like people are way more pro Danielle. I think, obviously, because she isn't the one who initiated physical content yeah. contact. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean, look, I was she close in Aiden's face? Sure. But it's kind of like the thing where it's like, I'm not touching you. I'm not touching oh! you. They're not touching you. You can't touch them back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can get in, in their face. Mm -hmm. You can go a bit closer if you want, but you can't You can't shove someone and not expect them. I mean, I think we just talked to Rachel Fuda about the situation, and she was telling us, like, look, like, if, if someone shoves you, that person who shoved you, like, should expect to get the crack. That's what happens. <laughs> like, I, I, it's, like, I feel like it's, like it's like, that's kind of just, like, what you're taught from when you're a kid. Right. Like, you know, it's, it's self-defense. Look, Danny and I are not condoning violence. Violence is never the answer, but I think in terms of real housewives of New Jersey, this was a pretty expected reaction from Danielle. But also I did love that Gia was explaining <laughs> earlier to, I forgot. Oh, wait, who, to Teresa after yeah, Bella was pooping. Yeah, after, after Bella was pooping, she was trying to catch a flight to Michigan. She made time to discuss, uh, I guess, some girl code conduct ethics or something. When you get physical with guys, it's different. Like, they fight and then they make up. But, like, with girls, when you put your hands on each other, I feel like after that, you're pretty much, like, done. Well, I never, yeah, I never heard of this, but you go on. Like, guys can hit each other and make up and be fine because that's just how guys are. But when girls put their hands on each other, like that is a wrap, which I don't know how, I mean, we're gay boys. So I think the rules are a little bit different mm -hmm. for us, Danny. If someone puts their hands on you, is that, is that a wrap or can we forgive it? You You're know like, putting their hands on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, now who is and what, and in what context, and we're in the context of everything is Kamala Harris. We didn't fall out of the coconut tree. I would say if it was like heat of the, like if we were in like a, a fight and then we just like boom boomed and then cooled off, I could forgive that more than words. And I love that song more than words. I could, cause if you, oh, that song's so good. But if you say something to me, I will remember that to the day I die. If you punch me in the face, I'll, mm, I'll worry on it. Interesting. Well, yeah. 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 Are you, are you, well, yeah, now that you say that, yeah, words, words cut deeper for sure. I've actually had instances with friends where they might have had one too many cocktails and then got a little 
aggressive with me in a way that I know that they wouldn't have had they not been in. Mm. So I forgave them for that. And then the next morning when I confronted them about it, they didn't even remember it. So I've been in that situation and I was able to forgive it. But I guess if like, I don't know, I'm trying to actually now put myself in Danielle's position. Because I feel like it's kind of one of those things with the Danielle and Jennifer while it was bad. Like if they weren't, because Danielle's not mad about being pushed. She's mad about what she said about her. I don't know Jen to make up stories. That's all I'm saying. Like, How can you say that? that? She's saying that I stole from the charity that we did. Cause that's the thing. Like I would be like, okay, you push me. I threw my plastic cup at you. We both kind of had that. Not our best look. Let's face tune it and move on. But I'll be like, oh, you said I steal from a charity. Like. You're yeah, okay. So you said, she said she steals from a charity or, or pays herself for her time, whatever it is. Danielle's refuting that. The thing that now is just, cause last week I was like, wait, what did you say? And now it has fully penetrated my mind. I understand what they're saying. Danielle, t- and this is how I'm just interpreting the situation. Danielle was trying to give Jennifer Aiden a heads up that if she participated in this hair extension promo, that she wasn't going to get any money from it. And yes. if expecting money, then she just wanted her- to let her know, like, hey, like, do not put those extensions in your hair if you're if you're expecting a check. So the photo shoot. Part of so the I photo want to explain. We have a mutual hairdresser, Marissa. He this is her right hair. by. I spoke to Jen Aiden on the phone. I said, just want you to know, your picture is going to be on the website. We're probably not getting paid for it oh my god baby thank you so much i didn't know what it was all right you both do such good imitations and also without clearing it from your hair girl because your hair girl's gonna be like why are you on their website when i'm doing your hair right Right. she was actually respecting the hair people more right and also not wanting any of this laura mess into a new season because i still don't know this girl i I know play it with laura i can't i cannot do laura again please no 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 who has been popping all around, and we were talking about her a little bit of this, Messi Fessler is back. Because she was sitting at that meeting being like, what happened? What happened? And then she goes to the bougie brush. I love the monochromatic red. Monochromatic. And it's like this on point. Like, we can't talk today. But she went in, had a little mess. And do you think, I think it was maybe good that Fuda stormed off because I thought it was good for a second where I'm like, Okay, so they don't exchange some heated words. Well, it would be fun to watch. Like, maybe they'll cool off, but I don't think they cooled off after that. Yeah, no, no cool. I, I feel like Red was very emblematic of the current state of affairs between everyone. Wait, because didn't um, when Caroline talked to Fuda this week, she says that she hasn't talked to Fessler in seven months? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they're still not good. I mean, we talked to Fuda at the start of the you know, the season premiere. And that's, that's when she like revealed that she and Fessler weren't cool. But I didn't realize that this tension had gone so far back to kind of, you know, we're pretty early into the season still. Like yeah. they for a right. long time. It's just so sad. Because I know. Because so they were so close. It did make me LOL. When Melissa was like, wait, you're, why are you talking to a child? <laughs> Why are you talking to a child about adult conversations? It's so f-ing weird that a child is even sorry. Listen. I know. But you know what? Like, I, okay. Gia is 21. She's an adult. 23, I think, right? 23. Yeah. She's over and 20. Me. <laughs> right. She, like, I feel like Gia, she's so mature. She is so eloquent. And she really, for years, I think she had to grow up fast because of circumstances with her parents. And I love that for her. Like she, she's just, well, I, I, I'm i sorry that she had to grow up fast, but we love, she's a very mature woman. <laughs> right. Well, no, I, I love the way she ultimately responded to that adversity. Yes. I think the adversity made her stronger. I, I, I'm a Run big from it. And so if I, if I'm talking to, I feel I'm, 33 years old. And if I'm talking to G, I feel like she has more wisdom than me. Like, I kind of feel like G is able to level with anyone at any age. So I feel like that's why Jen Fessler was comfortable talking to her that way. Of course, I think Melissa sees it a little bit differently because that is her, her knee is her little Gia. So it's, I, I get it. But at the end of the day, like Gia is an adult and she conducts herself as an adult and she moves through the house as experience as an adult. And she was just prepping herself to make it in Manhattan. Ah, uh, too, too thoroughly modern Gia. Yes. Look at her. <laughs> Wait, another line I was obsessed with in the boozy. And I might have made this up, but I think I didn't. And if I know our Daniel Cabral, I 
don't think I made it up where when she said that she pray, when she prays to God that when God takes the karma out on Jennifer Aiden, he doesn't touch her family. We're like, I have chills thinking of like how I could imagine her at night praying that like, I don't want, I'm going to be, I want the worst for her because she's a disgusting, evil person is what she kept saying. And Teresa's like, ah, it's out. But Danielle is out for blood for Aiden now. She's out for blood for Aiden, but oh, I she got her. yoked. From where I'm from, we say she yoked me to a point where it made every hair on the back of my neck stand up and I was in complete self-defense mode. Remember she said, is it? She got yoked. <laughs> she got yoked, so she wants Aiden to get yoked back. But I do love that she prays that Olivia and Gabby and all the girls don't get yoked by God Thank you so much, Daniel Cabral. If you do have a direct line to Christ or a higher power, thank you, thank you, thank you for, you know, protecting Aiden's girls because I do love her girls. And also, I hope that karma doesn't come too hard for Aiden. No. Just, I feel like she's just trying to be a housewife and she thought she was doing what needed to be done. It, she should never have shoved. Hey. Anyone, but I think, do you know what I think, Danny? I feel like it's really, I feel like when the cameras are on, the lights are lighting, and there's pressure to create drama, especially in New Jersey, because New Jersey has been dramatic for so many years, for so mm -hmm. long. Successful show. I'm not making any excuses for her behavior. I'm just saying, I think that could have contributed to her severe lapse in judgment that made her think it was okay to shove someone to get the reaction that she wanted. And it did, it backfired on her. So. And I also wonder too, because I guess, I don't, like, um, it's always, oh, I actually think, like, Jackie's the richest person on Jersey, like, secretly. I think they decided that. But, like, Aiden is extremely well off, which is, like, not millions, plural. And a lot of the attacks she's been hitting Danielle with have been about money. And I remember last season when Danielle's like, don't call my house cute, like, right. so all these like, people have, like, so she's, like, kind of, like, hitting her with all these things that, like, Maybe it's a more insecurity for Danielle too, where it's like, you're saying I have to like steal from my hair girl and charities to like mm -hmm. pay my stuff. Like, no. And I'm like doing my business on my own and everything like that. Cause I was noticing that I was like, Oh, this is like also very like financially traumatic as well. Yeah. I didn't even, I didn't even notice that, but Fudo was just telling Caroline at that, at that recent event, she was like, Aiden likes to push buttons. She knows how to push buttons well and she will just keep pushing and pushing and pushing a b a b a b right right so she, yeah she's a b in her way through through this season Wait, of you know what i would love to do though i'd love to play mario kart with jennifer aiden now uh, like in her giant house that actually sounds really fun oh my god wait aiden plus her daughters that actually does sound kind of like a dream situation and then botox from bill aiden <laughs> Perfect day. Come on. Wait, but what's not a perfect day is the drama to come because I, this is what happened last week. We had Danielle and Jennifer, but then the trailer had this Fuda Fessler situation. And we're like, how did we get here? And we saw how we got here. But now we have a Marge and Dolores sit down about calls going, text going green. Ah, oh, Margaret's in her Drake. And that's not a good place to be. I, yeah, I'm so confused with that. I don't understand how Margaret and Dolores get into a bad place. What I'm hoping or thinking is like, maybe they're talking about a different situation. You know, when you're like explaining a situation mm. and it, you know, if, if it's edited a certain way, it looks like you're talking to someone very negatively. But really what it is, is like you're speaking as another person, like what you thought they said, talking about something, you know what I mean? So maybe or it's, it's like. I wasn't calling you a raccoon. I, I was calling Kathy. <laughs> or something like that, you know? But isn't this the scene, I think, because I think they were on the couch where Dolores calls Marge a C and, or some The word, the, the, the C word, I think, gets used in an upcoming episode. I know, and that's what I'm just, like, not getting. Like, how, I just, I, I feel like Marge and Dolores specifically don't really use that oh. word that just doesn't seem to be in their vernacular so first of all i'm confused why they're feuding i'm confused why confused why either of them is calling the other a see you next week it's just like it's very confusing to me so i'm very intrigued to, to see next week's episode to see how we get there and then also how jennifer aiden what does she say she doesn't want to apologize to a what uh a trash bag a trash 
plug it in, plug it in, Glade. Like, I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah. I know. Oh, this is, and like, I feel this has truly been an impeccable season of Jersey so far, which is why I'm extra annoyed. Well, I'm glad that we now have a presidential debate of the Jersey ladies have because we do see some resolution from what's going on here. Yeah, I know. I just, I feel like resolution is not, I don't, I don't know if it's possible. What we do hope is that there was good resolution because the Marge and Joe scene was very, very, Oh, I mean, it was just very, very, very sad. I mean, hopefully it seems like he's all good now. Are you freaking out? No. I'm fine. I know. It's, I just I, don't want to. got to get it checked, but it's not the end of the world. No, but I just want you okay. Oh, my God. I don't want I'm actually anxious. Right. I feel like if there was a bad update to share, we would have found out about it in real time or like in the news or in a post or something. So I'm hoping and keeping my fingers crossed that next week's episode, we find out that all is good despite the abnormal uh, prostate exam. But it was very sweet to see them come together and be so sweet and affectionate. I feel like with joe and marge their relationship for the most part just what we see on the show it's so like silly and fun and cutesy and we never really get those highly yeah like the highly emotional moments so it was nice to see them come together in that moment i also loved how chill joe was about the situation although i didn't love that marge was riddled with anxiety it was so sweet and touching to see how much she cared about him I I know. Yeah. So send in, send in all the good energy for that. But yes, it does seem hopefully everything. Look, hopefully the only drama March has to deal with next episode is whatever's happening with the Dolores phone calls or not phone calls. Yeah. All I know is she better not call her a slob. <laughs> Wait, also sweet and touching though, the gay wedding. Like, oh. you know, like that came and went. It was a little flash in the pan right in the middle of the episode. But it, it really was came so out and came away. Yeah. To my cousins, my best friends, I love you both. I love you. Yeah, I'm how perfect for Pride Month. We're, we're ending Pride Month, literally on the last day of Pride Month, by watching uh, Mike and Nick get married. And it was very sweet to see Joe officiate the wedding and explain why it was so special to him. And then it was also very nice to see Melissa be such an ally and explain that Nick, Nick's her cousin and, and Mike is the, the partner, the, the new husband. And Mike's family didn't show up to the wedding because they don't accept him being gay. But it seems like Melissa's family has accepted and embraced him. And then we saw the moment Joe talking about when Nick came out to him and I just, it, it, I think he was crying. I thought maybe I was crying. It was, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was very, it was very, very sweet. I know. I'm like, there was a lot of beautiful, mo- there was like a lot of cute moments this episode between the chaos. And that's what Jersey gives you. It gives yeah. you the full border. You have like the nice cheese, like the, uh-huh. the briny olive and pickles, you know, got the whole plate. So it's some salty salami and some, Bread to soak it all up in. Yeah, so they really, they continue to deliver. I know, I know. That was a really chic wedding. And I loved Melissa in a Versace dress. Oh my God, I know. She looks so good. Everyone looks really, even Joe Gorga in the tux. I was, it was, he, I mean, Joe Gorga typically always does it for me, but when you wrap those muscles in a nicely fitted tux, go, if, if he doesn't hit you, you'd be mad at him. You couldn't forget him. <laughs> exactly. You're like, that's where I draw my line. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> you daddy. <laughs> Please, please. If Joe, if Joe Gorgas said that to me, that's a wrap. Happy Pride. <laughs> he just got dogged by your hair trials. Yep, exactly. <laughs> 